Hi, my name is Harim Kim, a medical student from South Korea. Today, I'll be studying cervical incompetence or cervical insufficiency with you. The purpose of this video is for my own study, so it might be incomplete or misleading. So if you have comments and feedback, I'll be waiting for that. This is the reference. So in order to know what is abnormal cervix, we need to know what is a normal cervix during pregnancy. So during pregnancy, the competent and sufficient cervix is a cervix that can keep the fetus and membranes inside the uterus until the baby is delivered. But the incompetent cervix is the cervix that cannot do this. So in the second or third trimester, the cervix may get dilated without labor, meaning without uterine contraction. Um, in sonographic imaging, the incompetent cervix can be screened um, because the cervix may appear shorter than normal. The short cervix is, by definition, less than 2.5 cm in length. And the patient may present with typical cervical insufficiency histories, meaning that she, might, she may have lost her baby in her second or third trimester without uterine contraction and the cervix being uh, the only one getting dilated and letting the fetus or membrane out. Then what is normal cervix in pregnancy like? By 30 weeks, the cervix may be stable if normal, and as the baby gets bigger and heavier, the cervix may get shorter because there's a bigger pressure. So from 14 to 20 week, it is normal for the cervical length to be around 35 to 40 millimeter and uh, from 24 to 28 week it might be 35 millimeter and at term it might be shorter, which is around three centimeter. So there might be some risk factors for um, cervical insufficiency. There are inborn factors and also acquired factors. The inborn factor may include uterine anomaly, intrauterine exposure in the part of fetus, and collagen abnorm abnormalities. So if you remember M1 lecture, you might, you might have heard of, for example, three or five um, collagen abnormality may result in endless download syndrome. Uh, and there's also a card factor, such as prior cervical surgery, including conization and DES exposure on mother's part, and prior spontaneous preterm birth, multiple gestations, and prior cervical trauma, including the trauma that um, the patient had during normal delivery. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, the patient might not have typical symptom in the case of cervical insufficiency. Rather, the patient may present with vague symptoms including pelvic pain, back, backache, vaginal spotting including discharge or bleeding, and sometimes vaginal pressure. I know this term is rather um, vague, but I guess that's um, a feeling like baby being felt heavy and going downward because the cervix cannot support the baby. It's important to diagnose cervical insufficiency with clinical signs, and there are four clinical signs that my professor have um, not uh, have marked. So the first one is recurrent pregnancy loss after second trimester, um, and cervical dilatation after second trimester without labor, meaning without uterine contraction, and the cervix may get gradually shortened with typical history of cervical insufficiency. So the typical history may include the first two ones that I have mentioned and funneling shape on sonographic imaging may be seen. Um, and the short cervix is, as I have mentioned before, is the cervix that's less than 2.5 centimeter in length and may have funneling shape and ultrasonography. So this is sonographic findings that I have tried to draw that have somehow failed, I'm going to explain. This is where the fetus lies, and this is um, the uterus. So this is the cervix. This is the cervix, uh, which looks like um, on the sonography. So I have tried to measure um, the diameter from here to here, that's how you measure the diameter. 
of the cervix. And this is also um, the diagram of the cervix of funneling shape. So if the cervix appears funneling, then it would look V-shape on here. So the treatment um, is normally circular. This is the mainstay of treatment. It's pretty much like uh, tightening the cervix. So there's two approach. One is transvaginal, the other is transabdominal approach. This is a um, McDonald's approach, which is frequently used. So it's um, tightening the cervix in star shape or like when you when you tighten this, it might be a diamond shape. And the, this picture that I have drawn is transabdominal approach and it can be done between 10 to 14 weeks. So this is the loop. And this is, as you can see, uterus and this is the cervix. And it needs open surgery. And there are some other indications that um, circulage can be done. So circulage can actually be done for a prevention of premature um, delivery. So it can be done between 10 to 16 weeks if, they, it's, if it's deemed necessary. And between 16 to 24 weeks, if cervix is less than 20 to 25 millimeter, meaning that's too short, and if it shows funneling appearance, it needs therapeutic um, circulage. And after any time after first trimester, if it shows prolapse membrane, meaning that the if this is cervix, there is here there is a membrane, and the membrane may get out of the cervix because the cervix is too much loosened, then it may need emergency circulage. Then the circulage may be removed at thirty seventh week and the doctor can expect normal delivery after this. Um, this is what well, the reference of this picture. And there is non-surgical treatment options as well, and it says there, uh, doctors could use progesterone, bed rest, beta blocker, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory medicine, but the mainstay of treatment is still circulage. And there's contraindications to circulage, which includes severe fetal anomaly, infection, um, active bleeding, labor, blah, blah, blah. And this is my experience in hospital. My professor had one patient who had a cervical insufficiency, and she decided to delay the circulage because she had fever. And my professor explained that if she has fever, there is a possibility that fever can cause the cervix to be dilated. And after um, absolute bad rest and after the fever had mm, been downgraded, the, fortunately, the patient presented with no funneling um, cervix and the cervix length got lengthened actually within normal range. range so. Uh, I have experience of seeing a patient whose surgery being delayed. I'm not sure whether she finally got the surgery or not, but that was um, the experience in hospital. So this is the end of my presentation. This um, might be somewhat incomplete, or, and you might feel that there might be some wrong information included here. So if you think so, you can please leave comments, or if you think I need... Um, you need to contact me, you can contact me through this email. Thank you.